Hello everyone, the Dex here and welcome to Feed the Basics episode 3. In the previous episode I went through the concept of doubling your resources by for example using the pulverizer and I also went over the other methods that you can use in order to increase the value of everything that you mine. In this episode I'm going to go over the concept of automation. In the previous episode I used thermal expansion, once again I'm going to use thermal expansion to give it an example. Uh, because it's simply very convenient to use and also relatively cheap to make. And right before I start, I actually should mention that uh, in actually Minecraft, uh, vanilla Minecraft version 1.5 and above, uh, the developers added uh, a hopper. So actually the game has an hopper on its own, uh, but for because I'm playing on version 1.4.7 and this is not yet available, I'm going to use a different type of hopper, which unfortunately is actually a little bit uh, less... Uh, effective. Well, it, it, it works differently, but it's not doing exactly the same thing. However, if you're playing on 1.5 and above, you can use the hopper instead. Okay, so again, as I've said, we're going to go through the concept of automation. Uh, automation is something that many mods uh, in Feed the Beast lets you do, uh, specifically crafting automation. So I'm going to go through the automation of uh, using uh, specific ore that you mine. So from the most basic, simple way to mine something into a product. Uh, it's always a good idea to set up what you want to craft before you start. So what I'd like to craft, let's say I'd like to get myself a bunch of iron uh, helmets. I like to have a lot of helmets uh, available at every time. So to craft an iron helmet, first I'm going to need some sort of a crafting method to craft uh, five iron ingots into an iron helmet. Before that, I'm going to need um, to smelt an iron ingot into an iron ore, or an iron dust into an iron ingot. And basically that's it. That's a very simple, small process, and it's not too long, uh, so let's get started. So first, I'm going to use the same console that I did previous time. There is no reason to forget things that we've already learned. So I'm going to use the pulverizer as part of the process. So let's say, um, let's create, I'm going to create a build craft hopper. Uh, that's again, not, the, uh, not the, the vanilla hopper, that's a different type of hopper. So it's going to require five iron ingots, uh, a stone gear and a chest. So I'm going to take the chest right here and I'm going to make a stone gear, which is going to require some cobblestone. Uh, and I'm going to need some um, iron as well, and a little bit of sticks. I'm going, to create my, so I'm going to use NEI to help me here to create some sticks. So I'm going to need uh, four sticks, create one wooden gear, and upgrade it to one stone gear, and create the hopper that I want to use. And right here, with my pulverizer, what I'm going to do is actually, the pulverizer will be the first part of the automation, but the actual entry point will be the hopper. So what I'm going to do is the input, the blue slot, is already configured to be the top, so that's perfect for what I need. I'm going to place my hopper on top of it, and now hopper, similarly to um, the vanilla hopper, will simply push items in the direction you specify uh, by default, uh, Buildcraft hoppers have pretty much no other way except for going to the bottom. So pretty much anything that I put inside the hopper, for example, uh, some iron uh, ore, as you can see, it's being pushed into the pulverizer and getting processed. Now, the reason why you want to start using something like this is basically it gives you a much larger buffer of items that you can uh, put inside it and go away instead of, uh, for example, only placing one stack because this is what you can place in the pulverizer and then you're going to need... Uh, to maintenance it uh, more often, then supply it one time with four stacks and then you've got more time that you can do other things. So the hopper will be the entry point. I already got the pulverizer set up, so the pulverizer will make sure that I double the value of all my iron ore. Uh, next to it, I'm going to start smelting. I'm going to uh, need something that smelts a, pu a pulverized iron into uh, an iron ingot. Now, a furnace uses um, coal, which I don't really like, so let's try something else. Let's actually, again, once again, take something from thermal expansion. Uh, let's create the powered furnace. Again, a different machine, but the same mod. The powered furnace, once again, works on Buildcraft Energy and will simply smell things the way you may expect it. It's going to require redstone, it's going to require a machine frame, once again, the machine frame block, some bricks, some copper ingots, and once again, the redstone reception coil. Okay, so in order to craft it, I kind of prepared myself a bunch of things that I thought I'm going to need. Uh, so that will help me uh, get to craft it faster. 
So let's get started. So in order to craft a powered furnace, I'm going to require uh, two stone bricks. And I'm going to require a machine frame. So let's craft one. Once again, using NEI is extremely helpful in those type of things. I'm also going to need the redstone reception coil. And I'm also going to need two uh, bricks. I got normal uh, bricks, so let's convert them into the actual brick blocks. And we can actually now craft the powered furnace. Now, before we place it in the world, to complete the automation process, we're going to need to make sure that the output of the pulverizer, the, the red slot, is actually going to the right, because we want to place it on the right. So already it's already set up like this, so it's very convenient. We're going to place the powered furnace in the world. Now the powered furnace looks like this, very similar to what you would expect to have from a pulverizer. Uh, you got the storage of energy, the input and the output. Now something to make sure, again it's actually it's apparently very convenient because by default it's set up like that, that the left slot, which is currently hidden, but that's the left slot, is blue. And that's the input, and again it's already set like this by default, so that's fine, we can disable the other slot if you don't, if you don't want them. And finally we're also going to need to make sure that we got some energy. So um, we're actually going to set up another uh, Stirling engine. I'm going to place it underneath the current one, the current machine. Uh, in the future episode, I'm going to go over uh, a better way to do those kind of things. I kind of already made myself a Stirling engine uh, prepared for uh, this type of example. So we place it right here. We're also going to re restock it with coal and also restock our original uh, Stirling engine with some more coal. Place a lever so it can be turned on. And this is now ready to operate. All it needs is to turn on and to receive something that it can smelt. And finally, we're going to need... This basically is going to give us the iron ingots. So finally, what we're going to need is the way to actually craft the iron helmets that we're so looking for. So what we're going to use... Again, once again, there are many different methods to auto-craft in, uh, in the Feed the Beast packs, but I'm going to use Zycraft. Zycraft is a, different, is a mod uh, that's created by Soren. Uh, which gives you many different interesting machines. If you can actually go once again using NEI here to show you, uh, Zycraft is the end of the list. You can see that it gives you many different of interesting machines. Most of them, if you're new to Feed the Beast, will basically you will have no idea what they're doing. But they actually are very useful if you know how to use them. What we're going to need is the fabricator. Fabricator is the autocraft method of uh, Zycraft, and in a moment you will see why it's so powerful. So to craft it, we're going to need a crafting table, we're going to need an iron ingot, we're going to need three stones, and as you can see we've got, again, once again, the forge um, or dictionary uh, interchanging the blocks, because you can use any type of those uh, different changing blocks, those engineering blocks. There are five types, and you can use any one of them that you'd like. So, I'm going to use uh, the red one, uh, just for no particular reason. Uh, so in order to craft it, what I'm going to do is actually find the red engineering block. And as you can see, it requires bricks, uh, redstone, and a red zycorodite. The red zycorodite, once again, is something that you find in the world in the form of crystals, which you need to smelt. But that doesn't matter. If you don't know those kind of things, simply use any eye and it will help you uh, understand that smelty comes from red zycorium, and once again, it's something that you find in the world. So let's get the stone uh, bricks that I have kind of prepared. I think those are bad stone bricks. I'm going to need a different type of stone bricks. Uh, that's also the wrong kind. Um, let's get this stone bricks. Um, so set them up accordingly the way you should, and that should give you red engineering brick. Let's get four because I only need four. And let's actually craft the fabricator. So coming here, um, I forgot to actually get myself a crafting table. So now let's create the fabricator. So we've got the fabricator. Uh, our output from the part furnace once again will be on the right. So we're going to place the fabricator right here. Uh, the fabricator on its own is a very powerful block. You need to know how to use it. Um, the way you use it, you simply place a recipe in any type of recipe that you'd like. For example, you can place a recipe to create um, crafting tables. Now, as you can see, I had 16 items, 60 items in my hand, and when I right-click, uh, they don't go away. So you'll have 60. You're basically kind of placing ghost items in the pattern here, and the ghost items patterns will be... Uh, a recurring concept in many of the different mods. Many many mods use the, that idea of leaving a ghost item just for the sake of a pattern or some sort of a filter. 
uh, so the machine that you're using knows what you want it to do with it. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to set up the recipe for a helmet. And the way the fabricator works, this is basically the inventory. You can also see those kind of shapes right here, kind of suggesting that the, the movement is from the left to the right. This is basically the inventory. You can place whatever you like here, even something that's completely unrelated to the recipe. But when you place the items for the recipe, by default, if you place one iron, you get nothing happens. If you place two, nothing happens. If you place three, nothing happens. Four, nothing happens. But when you place the fifth one, it will create the iron helmet. Now that's by default. You can also change the mode of the fabricator. So for example, at the moment it's working on low, meaning when there is no redstone signal, it will work all the time. You can change it to require high signal. So now it won't do anything because there is no redstone signal. And you can change it to pulse mode. So it will require a signal, but only craft it once per signal. So if the signal is uh, stable on uh, high, it, it will only craft once. So basically what that gives us uh, is every time some iron is being smelted, it's going to come here into this iron, uh, into this fabricator and craft myself an iron helmet. Let's see the detection. Let's turn on all the engines and dump all this iron ore I've mined to actually uh, start the uh, process. So the hopper pushes items directly into the pulverizer. The pulverizer uh, pulverizes them. Uh, the pirate furnace will then smell them once it has enough energy and that will push items into the fabricator. Let's actually give it a little time to start. As you can see, the process of the first uh, smelting is already taking place. The moment it's finished smelting, it's gonna uh, push the ironing it into the fabricator. And that's going to simply sit here and wait until five of them accumulate and that will create more iron helmets. All right, so that's pretty much it. I actually should set it up back to auto low. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's the most. That's a very basic and simple way of automation. There are far more complicated and far more useful methods to use uh, with automation, and many other different ways to automate things. But as I've said, automation is something that becomes very much available with the use of Feed the Beast mods, and it's something that, as a player, it, it, if you know what you're doing, you can pretty much set up processes to take place while you're doing other things, and you can pretty much make your time in the world a little bit more efficient. Uh, so you can do other things while other things are taking place. Alright, uh, that was it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.